Alright, welcome on back, Faithful. It is our, uh, I guess, the second part of our painting tutorial. We're going to be talking about weathering today. Now, the difference between weathering and leaving a regular solid coat on is monumental. Right here is a piece that I've marked off here where I'm going to be doing black, so I know where I'm not going to be doing my weathering, because it won't matter there. However, with the weathering process, what I mean by that is I'll be taking a shade of green, or a shade of whatever color that I'm uh, going to be using to paint my armor or the base coat, I'm going to be doing a shade a little bit lighter. I'm going to be, I'm going to be taking that shade and I'm going to be buffing it in to the armor in areas where it would be getting the most wear. If you can imagine what like an ammo box from uh, World War II might look like, where it's been rubbed in a lot of areas and the paint has started to buff itself, that's what I mean by weathering there. The color that I've been using here is this Italian olive, and it's um, a Krylon paint here. It's a satin finish, so you can see here the difference. This one here is unweathered. This is just the solid base coat here, and as I said, I've marked with X's places that I'm going to be painting like completely jet black. Everywhere else, though, is going to get a weathering treatment, just like this uh, calf piece here. And in addition to this weathering here, the next little step in the process that we'll be doing is we're going to be adding some chrome dusting over the entire thing to give it some uh, scratches and some battle damage. So this is just our our weathering from use right there is what we're going to be going for. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick here. We're going to go ahead and you can see I've done a whole lot of pieces here. I've got the forearms here, we've got our thighs as well. Um, the helmet's not yet hit there, but we have our uh, bicep pieces there. Um, but as I said, we're going to go ahead and do this boot here. The um, best way to do it is you're going to take your lighter shade. Um, I've seen some guys do three different shades of paint when they're doing their armor. They'll do, if they're doing like red, they might do like a burgundy, um, a maroon, and then like a candy apple red. Don't do three shades, just do two. Find yourself a dark one and find yourself a lighter one. You can see the difference in shade there. So take it, give it a good shake. I've already been shaking this for a while, so you shake it about a minute and a half. Get yourself a brush. Get, just get yourself a cheap one. Don't buy like the wooden handle, um, really crummy looking straw like brushes because the bristles will fall off into this. Um, but get yourself a brush here, about two or three bucks at Walmart. And you're going to lightly spray into the bristles, or the bristles. About that much there. Just to start with. And you're going to start to buff this into the armor. And you're going to be going for the edges that are going to get the most wear, that are going to be, imagine if they'd be getting scraped or bumped along um, grass or sticks or um, rocks as you're walking through a forest, or if you're instead of fight and you're running through rubble and you're running through heaps of garbage, you're running through a battlefield, areas that are going to get scuffed along just through your normal soldier routine. Grab a little bit more here. You can see how I'm doing this, just gently buffing it in. And the thing that you want to keep in mind when doing this is you kind of have to be honest with the brush strokes. Don't just go inside here and just try and dot it in where you think it is. Actually rake the brush across the piece of the armor and see where that paint ends up collecting. Because this is the most honest way to paint this thing and get the most realistic weathering look that you're going to go for or that you want to see. Don't be afraid to get inside there. In this case, oftentimes, more is actually going to be more. This is the, one of the few times where the less is more phrase doesn't hold up. Because, like I said, in addition, you're going to be adding some chrome dusting to this as well. And that's going to round out the entire painting process. Save for a little bit of a black wash, but we will save that for another tutorial. And you can see here these angular parts of this upper, uh, I guess, foot there. You can see how I'm brushing it. I'm using kind of the, the wide part of the brush here. I start with the bristles just to get the paint where I want it, and then I use the wide part of the brush to fan it across the entire thing. And, and it'll take a few pieces to finally kind of get the hang of it. As I mean, even with myself, it always takes me one or two pieces to kind of get into the groove of doing some weathering all over again. So I typically start with the calf pieces. Uh, so I feel like the calves are the easiest to start with. They really have some planar surfaces to them, and they're really easy to get going on. Um, the boots are another good spot to start with, because you figure the boots are going to be getting a lot of uh, wear. That's another thing. Think about what pieces are going to be seeing the most um, action. 
like the toe piece here is a big one. Obviously, if he's kicking into things or he's running, that toe is going to be getting obliterated. So give a heavy dose on that toe. Imagine it getting scraped. What would a scrape going back across there look like? You can see how that starts to round out the shape here and it adds a whole lot more character than just that deep, rich green. A little bit more on this side here. This toe will be just about done. Or this uh, front part of the shoe here will be just about done. You can see how I'm kind of paying a lot of attention to the bottom part of the shoe here. This is part that's going to be making contact with the ground, the edges there. I'll grab the other one here, you can see kind of a side by side. You can see what I'm talking about here. And I'm probably going to even add a little bit more to this because I want it to really stand out. I don't want it to just be really faded in there. I want it to be a strong juxtaposition with that lighter shade versus the darker shade. But anyway, guys, that right there is a quick little tutorial on how to add some weathering to your armor. Um, like I said, again, we're going to be having another painting tutorial where I'm going to show you how to add battle damage to your armor. And after that, we're going to be doing a black wash with a dry brush, and that's going to be adding dirt and a little bit of char inside all the little nooks and crannies and crevices inside your armor. Anyway, guys, till next time, take care, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.